So ever since designing and laying our own decking about a couple of years ago, something that I wasn't in a rush for was patio furniture because there's so many different costly ones out there and the cheap ones I didn't think were great quality. But last Monday, my neighbor actually sold us their swing chair and table and two chairs very cheap. So it was very handy, didn't have to go to the shop and we just walked around with it. But one thing that I had to sort out was replace the canopy. So that's what today's video is all about and it cost me £7.50 to do because I had all of the other bits in as well. And uh, yeah, I'm very pleased how it went. The only thing is I would probably go for thicker fabric next time because I had to blindly buy this online but it is my favourite type which is called ripstop and it doesn't fray and it doesn't actually need hemming if you don't want to providing you get a heavier weight. So keep on watching if you want to see how I did it. So for this project I knew I only needed a two metre sheet of fabric so I laid it flat on the floor No you monkey doggy! and then placed the old one on top to use as a template. So I just flattened the whole area with my hands, making sure that there's no creases and bumps. Now, please! And once I was happy with the way it was laying, I then pinned the top fabric to the bottom fabric to stop any movement. Then using some white tailor's chalk, or you could use any chalk that washed out, I drew around the whole top layer. Now I wasn't really bothered about this being absolutely pristine. I didn't want to make a meal out of it, I just wanted to do a quick job. Because to buy these new are about 26 to 30 quid anyway, but I could not find my particular size. And to make life even easier, I decided not to follow all of the scalloped edges, and I used my OmniGrid board, or you could use a ruler, just to create a straight line. So I only had four corners that went inwards and that would make it easier to sew in general as well. And because the fabric was so thin, I decided to add a hem allowance. But if you've gone for a really thick ripstop, then you could go for a finished look by using some really sharp scissors or a rotary cutter and following it all the way around. But again, I'm doing a shortcut here and I went for a half an inch allowance and just did it by eye with a pair of scissors. And that means I didn't cut on the white line you see, I cut on the outside of it by half an inch. So it's completely up to you. Normally I would have just measured it all the way around and cut it professionally, but we just don't notice it. Or you may even want to use some hemming tape and just fold it over and press it down with an iron. So once I'd removed all the excess, I needed to make sure I could hem around these corners that go inwards without any hassle. So again, using some sharp scissors, I cut a slit right in the corner and right up to the tailor chalk. That way, when I come to hem it, I could fold it and it won't have so much tension. And I did that for all of those four corners. Then I flipped the fabric to the opposite side so the chalk was facing downwards. And then I could fold that hem allowance over and use that white chalk as my guide. And then I pinned it into place. And then I continued to do that all the way around. But I did need a lot of pins for this. Now again, if you're very, very particular, you could press the hems with an iron. I wasn't bothered. I do find ripstop creases very easily anyway with my fingers. And now straight to the sewing machine. And here's me moving the needle to the far right because my hem allowance isn't that big. We are just going to be doing basic straight stitches here. And if you've got a sewing machine and you've never used one before, I am self-taught. And there's so many great tutorials on YouTube as well. And I also use the thinnest needle that I had in my collection. I'll leave all links to things below if it helps. But what I didn't mention earlier is it's also waterproof, it's rip resistant, and it's used in hot air balloons and things like that. So after a couple of hours work, bear in mind it takes me longer because I film it, this is what it looked like. So now it's the next morning and I needed to sort out the corner fittings on the new one. So I measured the distance from corner to corner of these fittings and checked on my new one and it was perfect. Now I could have made my own out of ripstop fabric, but instead I thought let's just use the existing corner ones. It's not really going to be seen and it's roughly the same colour. So I unpicked all four with a stitch picker. I'm a woman in need. 
need, aren't our hands? And then I pin them to the new one. As long as I squared them all up and pin them down, job was a good one. So I'm back to the sewing machine again, but this time on the first and the last few stitches, I reinforced them by pressing the rewind button. So it just sews in reverse, just to double stitch an area, because there's gonna be some tension on this while it's on the top of the swing chair. And I sewed around the two sides of those, obviously not the opening, and this created pockets. And then the last thing I did was even pin the old straps to the new one. And these straps attach to the front and the back bar. But if you don't have any of these, it's very straightforward. I could have just cut some strips of this fabric and it wouldn't have frayed and just sewn them on or even some ribbon. And I just pinned these down to where they were on the old one and definitely made sure I had some reinforced stitches on this. And just went back and forth a few times doing one row of mini stitches dead center of the strap. Nice and easy. So that's it for this one. We just need some better weather now. Hopefully last weekend wasn't a one-off, but if you would do anything differently, feel free to comment below as usual. I uh, am very pleased and I can just move on now to restoring the rest of the metalwork. And I'll probably be going over it with a, a green as well. Anyway, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you wanna see more and hopefully I'll see you in my next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. Do I need to make some earmuffs?